Dearly beloved, friends of the forest, we're gathered here today to talk about Flying Lotus's latest album, Flamagra, which just came out. Flamagra. What does it mean? You may ask. What is Flamagra? Personally, I think Flamagra is Flying Lotus's level two spell. It's the spell that he uses to damage enemies and heal himself both externally and internally at the same time. I'm gonna be talking about this album in colors and imagery and sounds. I'm gonna to try to talk less about it in a technical aspect because that's not how I look at albums. I think about albums in as a, like a complete visual audio experience. This isn't really an album review. This is me talking about how I consume this album and I'm producing something. I'm producing something out of this album. So I'm gonna be showing you the drawing that I made while I was listening to this album and talking to you about the thoughts that I had, the images that were floating into my head and out of my head and all kinds of shit when I was listening to this album. Flying Lotus is a producer and director and writer and animator and filmmaker and overall lovely person from the US. Flying Lotus has a very interesting outlook on life, a very interesting way of depicting things Whenever I listen to Flying Lotus's work or watch some of his stuff, I'm seeing a really beautiful mixture of video games from the 80s and 90s to now. I'm seeing that prominently, you know, anime influences, which are kind of obvious because, I mean, he hangs out with Watanabe and has obviously been scoring and directing stuff with like Blade Runner and Cowboy Bebop and um, I believe Ghost in the Shells. He was working on stuff, some of the stuff from there. His previous album was You're Dead. You're Dead, I think, was Flying Lotus kicking the door down and really sticking a flag in the morbid rap scene. And I'm not talking about some like, oh, death and destruction, not that type of shit, but really, I think, a beautiful way of looking at our deaths, both physically and digitally, like the death of the universe, that sort of stuff. If the death of the universe was listening to an album, it's You're Dead, it's Flay Magra. It's This is the kind of world that he's creating in. Creating in the chaos, creating in the place where things are also being uncreated at the same time. It's sort of like looking at the blackness of what your existence was before you were born. So there are these two beautiful bookends on this album, Heroes and Hot Oct. In between these, you get the meat of Flay Magra and the, the story. And I, I do think there's a story. It's super, super experimental and disjointed, but I'll try to tell you how I feel about Flay Magra's story and what I think it is or how I interpret it. I'm not saying that this, this is what it is, but this is how I interpret it. Heroes is, it's the beginning of something. It's the beginning of every RPG you've ever played, every story you've heard that resonated with you. It's the rain and the sounds are starting to take me to a place where I'm thinking about what if this is the point where your life starts becoming the story? What if this is the point where you're the RPG character and the weird stuff starts happening, right? What if Heroes to me is the beginning of that? It's, you know, Terra in Final Fantasy VI in the, the snow machine. It's Cloud jumping off the 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 train it's about about to go to the make make a reactor with barrett and all of them and these are all stories that steve is also familiar with so i think this is not far off this album exists in a place of interludes that are highly experimental and then you get the stuff that's a little more songy stuff where it's like he has features people are rapping people are singing and stuff that you're kind of used to and then you go back to the interludes right you come back into the consistent stuff and back into the interludes Syncretic, it's a mixture of things. So syncretic, let's take uh, Haiti for example, because I'm Haitian. Haitians are a mixture of West African cultures, French cultures, and indigenous cultures to the island of Hispaniola. They mix all this stuff together and that's where you get uh, 
religions like voodoo, that's a syncretic religion. That means it's a mixture. Flamagra, Flying Lotus, his music is syncretic. Heroes in a Half Shell, Takashi, FF4. This song is called FF4. I didn't, I've been listening to this album several times, did not realize till just now that, like, I, I've been talking about the Final Fantasy influence, but it, it's right here. It's right here, the mixture of all these things. This is why Basquiat's amazing. This is why I love Dave McKean, David Cho, people like this. They mash everything together and they're just not ashamed of it. Hip hop came from sampling. Hip hop is about sampling, DJing, that sort of stuff. Again, syncretic. Start thinking about this word and think about how it applies to this album. Um, I love that he's just unashamed of including these, including these references and merging them with his his jazz training, his musical background to create these things that are greater than any, any of the sum of its parts. And it takes an artist, it takes a true craftsman to properly mash things together. Because you've all seen mashups and stuff that are sort of like janky or it's like, you can obviously tell that these things are stitched together with a purpose of having it be like, it's like if Final Fantasy was with Ninja Turtles. Like there are obvious ways to do it and then there are not obvious ways to do it. There are ways where it's like, you really feel like the person ingested it and you can't even tell what came out of it. Again, that's the power of Basquiat. That's the power of um, Warhol. It's the power of Flying Lotus. It's the power of syncretism. Is that how you say it? Fuck, I don't know. Syncretism. Syn synch what? Right here, we got a beautiful, disgusting tadpole nesting ground. Probably last night, hundreds of thousands of frogs were uh, fucking down here. A lot of these are dead, and a lot of these are alive. And I'm a big fan of putting the living and dead together, the beautiful and the grotesque living together. I don't think that I don't think any of Flying Lotus's stuff is grotesque. Actually, yeah, I mean, Cousseau is really gross, but this album isn't grotesque to me. It's, it might be grotesque in the way that you might look at like some dead tree branches, but like, I don't, I find that stuff pretty. When you're thinking about the living and the dead and the transitions, a lot of these songs in this album, you go from interlude to song, like I was saying, interlude to song. And maybe in some ways I think about if I had to attach a, an idea of living or dead to these two elements, I would say that the instrumentals are the dead parts and the songy songs with the features are the living parts. So I gotta talk a little bit about the features on this album. The songs that live in the living portion of the album like I was talking about before. The ones that stand out in my mind are, come on, you gotta talk about Tierra Wack. Tierra Wack is a person who, if you're talking about syncretic art, Tierra Wack exists in that world. It's the super, it's the super free form impressionist painting style rap that they do. This back and forth where she's repeating these motifs that are nonsensical and they, they're still rhyme and she's spinning these bars that are so far into the fucking future. Anderson Pack is on here with another feature that's a little more typical, even though he has a, a couple of different movements and moments that he changes things up, which is kind of cool. Solange, George Clinton, Toro Wee Moi with a cool ass feature too. I would, I would love to have just been in the room when they were creating these things because I would imagine that it was less of a studio vibe and more so like we're creating something that is art. We're creating a visual, we're creating an audio experience here. These are all, these are otherworldly interactions and collaborations that exist only in the Flying Lotus dimension of Flamagra. Shit, what? Yo. Someone just left a DS out here, man. What the fuck? Hell fucking yes, look at this. This thing's in pretty good condition, man. Look at these uh, etchings. Like, what do you think that means? What do you think it is? Some crazy.
You're standing in a cool, dry room. There's very little sound other than the ragged breathing of the dark, shadowy figure who is laying in an old bed in front of you. You feel like you're inside of a dream. Every breath you take seems temporary. Your mind feels fragile and inconsistent. It's as though you're thinking of everything and nothing at once. Are you okay? You came, finally. I need the forgotten. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Help me. Are you the person who brought me here? Sleep. It's like he used all his energy just trying to talk to me. This room is warm and poorly ventilated. It smells like a library. It's not unpleasant. The floors, walls, and ceilings are made out of a red material that resembles lava, but it's crunchy, like aluminum foil. The woman in front of you is illuminated by a strange green aura. As she moves, she leaves a trail of afterimages that look like her, temporarily occupying the space where she once was. Hello? I'll tell you what I told the rest of them. I'll even say it in the same way. What are you talking about? She may have trapped me here, but I will not give her anything she asks for. She has to follow the rules, just like I do. Are you a prisoner of some sort? You might think you're clever, but you're not. You look and sound just like the last interrogator she sent. I really have no idea what you're talking about. My name is Dom. I just got here. I don't even know what here is. Sure. I'll humor you, Dom. I'll give you information, but on one condition. Okay. What is it? Promise me you'll help me leave this place. I don't know what this place is, like I told you. I can't promise something like that. That's fine. Promise it, and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Okay. You seem trustworthy, I guess. I, I don't know. Say, memory read, I promise to help you leave this place and find your sister. I promise to help you leave this place for your sister. Wrong. Say it like I said it, exactly like I said it. Like this. Memory read. I promise to help you leave this place and find your sister. Memory read. I promise to help you leave this place and find your sister. Oh, wow. You really weren't lying. No, I wasn't. Who are you? I'll give you the short version for now. Memory read is one of the finishing sisters. She is closer in age to the eldest than the youngest. If you have ever made a promise to yourself to finish something, you may have seen her. Making promises, oaths, and rituals are the best ways to summon her. Fulfilling promises, oaths, and rituals are the best way to gain her favor. She will never break a promise. She never forgets anything that she is part of. 
She was once able to travel freely in and out of her own memories, but lost the ability and was imprisoned here until now. I'm Memory Red. What is this place? We all tend to call it the realm of creation. I mean, this is all really strange. Like, I was talking to this man in the other room who's stuck in a bed, but the bed also seems like a throne. The dead king spoke to you? That's his name? Yes. What did he say to you? He told me he needed, uh, that he needed something. I can't remember. It was hard to hear. Yes, yes. Wait, where are you going? You kept your promise. You haven't spoken to anyone long. This is incredible. My word. Right. Okay, now it's my turn. Dom, think of an idea that you've never shown anyone. Art, a video, a song, anything. Well, I guess I have one that never got released. Perfect. But I don't have my phone. I don't know how to access it. That's fine. Just think of it, and then imagine giving it to the dead king. Like this? Is he eating my idea right now? That's just how your mind is choosing to process it. He's taking the idea in the way he needs it most. A deal is a deal. Here. And what is this? No clue. I'm just fulfilling a promise. You can go home now. I'll contact you again using that DS. But, but give it a week or two. Do not reply to any weird messages if they're not directly from me. Okay. Thank you. I will protect you. Thank you for reviving me. What, what is this? Hello friends, yo, 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 what's going on? The drawing is complete. The drawing is finished. I'm casting a drawing spell on you. This is the finished Flamagra drawing. The drawing is complete. The drawing process has been finished. The drawing spell has been cast. This is the finished drawing. If you want to buy this drawing, you gotta go to domrabrun.com shop. The easy way to do this is to click the link in the show notes below. Now here's a special thing about this drawing. There are only 10 of these. There are only 10 prints made of this beautiful, delicious, amazing drawing that you're gonna want on your wall to talk to your friends and be like, hey, yo, man, this, this fucking drawing that Dom made, it's just and all your friends are gonna love it. I will not make any more prints of this drawing after this is done, so this print is very, very special. It's limited edition. DomRabbon.com slash shop, cop one of these. It's printed on limited edition, beautiful matte paper. My closing thoughts on this beautiful album are that it's an uncompromised, syncretic, insane vision from a beautiful, incredible mind that I'm just really happy 
that Flying Lotus exists as a human and that I get to live in this time period and share with you all my thoughts on this thing. I'm glad that we get to, I'm glad that we get to experience a vision this pure, uh, something that is so just beautifully strange. You guys know I love experimental strange stuff and I just put the highest value on this type of material. I put the highest value on the kinds of art that is genre breaking and it just breaks the seams of whatever you expect songs and music and genres to even be. That's what Flamagra is.